good afternoon. Uh, we are looking at the uh, new to us case dozer that we just got, uh, 450D. Uh, I was clearing some land, uh, pushing some stumps around, and uh, as you can see, it's a little bit of a swamp right now. We've had pretty heavy rains over the past few days. But a stump came up and hit me right in the engine block. It happened to hit right where the uh, uh, right where the throttle goes into the fuel injector, um, and that uh, has caused some problems for us. We're just going to take a walk around here to see what we're looking at. So we've already cleaned everything off. This was all caked in uh, in black, but uh, it's cleaned off now. Uh, we've actually already pulled off uh, where the throttle goes on to, um, and we put a plug in so the fuel doesn't leak out. Uh, we're looking to pop the top off of the fuel injector here, uh, and there should be a little rod that goes uh, between uh, the throttle uh, and the shutoff, and that's what we're looking to replace today because that's kind of what got sheared off. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. Um, I had to redo my audio because the, the video audio didn't record properly here. But uh, we'll take through. My dad's just gone to get some tools. He's the one who's going to be completing the change today, and I'll hold the camera. Uh, all right, so here we go. Uh, essentially what we're doing here, uh, trying to loosen everything. It's been cleaned off. We thought we might have had some problems with the aluminum casing. Uh, sometimes they corrode in there, but everything actually came off uh, quite easily. So no no issues here. Uh, taking the fuel lines off first, uh, that's the return line that's coming off here. So just need to pull them out of the way so we can pull the top off of the fuel injector. want to take your time don't want to get any dirt in anything while you're doing it and also don't want to drop any parts in the, the mud here because we will never find them again if anything happens to fall down through the engine block into the ground all right Let's see if i can get a little bit of a better angle here we've got three of them that we have to loosen one of them had a little uh, paint mark on it. I guess you can tell from likely the last time it was repaired. But again, everything came off super easy. No issues with corrosion like we were concerned with. Uh, just trying to make sure we're keeping dirt out of the system as much as possible anyway. Do make sure you uh, you shut off your fuel lines before you start pulling them off uh, so that you don't have any problems with extra fuel leaking out. We also had a little dish nearby so that uh, all the parts that we're pulling off, we can keep them uh, from, from falling into the dirt. So it's actually a little uh, old dog dish that we're using to hold everything in. Okay, so cleaned off as best we can with the rag, and let's get them taken off. Now we were concerned initially that we'd have to take the entire uh, injector pump off and send it away to be repaired, but uh, we checked with uh, the guys who deal with repairing these and they said we can just replace the pin. So super happy that it was a little bit easier to repair than we initially thought it might be. Alrighty. Just wiggle off. There we go. A little bit of excess fuel spilling out. And just have to watch that gasket. Alright. 
So everything's off, uh, just kind of pushing that gasket back into place for when we put it back on. And that's what it looks like uh, inside the fuel injector. So there's the broken piece. Uh, we essentially need to pull out that little shaft and replace half of it. So there's a, a, little, a little clip that's on there, a little T-shaped clip that needs to be pulled out. So the recommendation was getting some wire uh, cutters to pull it out. A little bit of a, a tight squeeze uh, with the manifold being right there. Let's see uh, if I can get a better view. We do try a few different tools here because we're having a heck of a time getting a grip on it. But you do need to get a grip and then kind of pull it straight backwards uh, to get it to come out of there. screwdriver, see if that works. No matter what position you have it in, there's not really an, an easy way to access it, so... Pliers, still not doing the trick. Making sure the tools are clean before we go digging in here. And back to the uh, wire cutters again. Black flies are getting a little thick, so my camera work uh, does get a little shaky here at times. But just a, just a pinch here, you can see it move as he pulls backwards. There we go. Clip is off. That's all it is. All right, so now we're gonna pull out the broken piece. So we're essentially taking the, the screw that was in the original one to kind of get a little bit of a thread on it so that we can pull it out of the hole. And it's just ever so slightly wiggling it and pulling it out. replacement part here and we did notice it's slightly different profile than the one that was in there so you'll notice our new one doesn't have that extra groove that's in the uh, the one that was originally there but uh, it does seem to still fit all the same so we gave the model number of the pump and that's what we got and it seems to fit uh, all the same so I'm not exactly sure why it's different but uh, the new one is working so that's really the most important part going to give it a little trial run here to make sure everything fits properly. Let's try the new one. seems to fit without any issues so we we look like we're good now the fun part of getting it all back in here and lined up properly to lubricate it a little bit all right and then the same thing goes here we just want to make sure that we're sliding it in and lining both of the pieces up and just kind of wiggling it in it should make a clicking sound once you line it up properly.
kind of clicks in. Do a little test to make sure the pieces are moving properly. Want to make sure we're satisfied before we close everything back up again here and put the clip back in. Now putting this T-clip uh, does prove a little bit more difficult than you might think. It doesn't just slide on. So um, you're supposed to be able to put it on and just give it a little tap with a hammer. But again, the manifold is kind of just in the way that it makes it super awkward to get a, a little bit of a swing on here. Uh, and to make sure that it goes in properly. So it does take us a second to get that clip uh, down properly. trial and error, try a few different things, see if it works, but uh, it's not quite going down the way we expected it to here. I'm trying to hold it and hammer it at the same time. It's kind of just keeps slipping off to the side. Try a different tool here, see if that uh, gives us any better luck. So we did separate it here, just not quite satisfied with uh, the engagement. And it was the second time that we pushed it back in that you really heard the, the click where it felt a lot better. Trying her again. better here just getting it down the rest of the way and she goes down into place good as new sure nothing looks like it wants to slide out. Sliding it back and forth again, just making sure that it works before we close everything back up again. I'm going to get the rag and just do a quick clean around the seal to make sure there's no extra 
extra dirt. Make sure it seals properly when we close it back up. So just double checking the seal. Looks like there's a little chip out of the inside, but uh, that's how it was. Doesn't seem to be causing any leaks or anything, so we are good to go. And there we go. Tighten the things back on. We did notice for the fuel return line that it was a little bit loose. Um, so I think when I hit the stump, it might have uh, kind of turned that a little bit. So we had a little bit of a fuel leak that needed to be uh, tightened up from that again. Which for tightening that at the bottom, most of the wrenches that we had didn't quite fit it properly. So we end up having to, to grind down uh, a wrench uh, just to get a proper grip on the bottom of it to tighten it up again. So if you're playing in the bush, I would recommend uh, just being super careful with any stumps that come up. Uh, or put some, some side panels so that if something does happen to touch you, it doesn't break something off uh, and ruin your day in the middle of a big old mud puddle. So again, not sure why the, uh, the original one was a little bit of a different shape. Uh, had a little bit of a cutout in it, but uh, functionally uh, it doesn't seem to be making any difference for us. Snugging them all back up again. Once those are snug, we need to reattach the fuel lines. So easiest way when you take them off, you'll see there's a little uh, rubber washer that goes in there. Um, you kind of just feed that over top of the fuel line again before you put it back in, and uh, you make sure you get a nice seal. Don't need to have any extra fuel leaks with the price of fuel these days. The black flies were having a good time eating us though. Just gonna see if I can get a little bit of a better view here. So at first we just tried to jam it back in there. That didn't quite work very well. So best thing is to unscrew it completely. You can see the little rubber piece in there. Feed it on, kind of separate the rubber from it and then just feed the rubber on uh, separately. It's the easiest way to make sure you're getting a really good seal. So just reseat it. There we have it, good as new. same thing to the other side. Just tightened up. Okay, and here we go for the other side.
Now, one issue that we did have uh, once we got it going again is the idle was actually set too low. So when we'd first start it up, uh, it would idle so low that it would just about shut itself off. So there are some uh, some screws that you can adjust um, for where your idle starts at on your throttle. Uh, so that might be something that you have to do. We ended up having to make quite a few adjustments uh, as it was idling way too low. So the original setting um, on our throttle needed to be adjusted. So it's as simple as either screwing it in further or unscrewing it, depending on which way you need to go, uh, just to make sure that your idle is at a good place. All right. So fuel lines are hooked up, um, and then just reconnecting the fuel line in the second place where it had been disconnected from. Again, that's just the return. Just need to put that on and tighten it up. Now the main fuel shutoff for this is uh, kind of in the rear, underneath the gas tank. Underneath the fuel tank, we'll say. So once you hook everything back up, uh, don't forget to turn the fuel on. And I'd say before you start, make sure you, you turn your fuel off. There we go. Now we need to hook the throttle back up. I'm trying to get a good view for you here. So feeding it through, bolting it on. There's a little bit of a better view. There we are. All right, well, it looks uh, brand new. So it looks much newer than everything else now that that part's been all cleaned. And we're ready to uh, give it a try. Just going to tighten things up. We're just going to make sure that everything works before we close it back up again. There we have it, nice and tight. Shiny and new. Give it another wipe down for any of the excess fuel that uh, might have spilled out while we were hooking up the lines again. Alrighty, so he's going to go and turn the fuel back on, and I'm going to hook the battery back up. I can do that with one hand. These machines do uh, move around a lot, so you want to make sure that's on there nice and tight. There we have it. And let's see if she fires up. So let's see if I can uh, get the audio clip uh, so you can just hear how bad the idle is the first time that I fire it up here. All right. 
Alright. No, push that down. Idling down too much. Uh, what do I need for that? Probably five sixteenths, eh? Five sixteenths, I got that. I don't think I got a five sixteenths wrench. Uh, Three eighths. Got half inch, eleven sixteenths, nine sixteenths. again. get the friggin' thing down far enough. All right, so we decided to actually uh, just drive it uh, back to uh, at least closer to the garage so we could work on it a bit easier up there. So the idle is still pretty low, but uh, we ended up moving it back closer. Uh, we can do some adjustments where we're not standing in a giant mud puddle. Um, so it was a little bit interesting driving it with the uh, the lower RPMs, but we eventually got it there. Well, we did get it back to the garage, and we got the idle to where we wanted it, so everything is working again. Uh, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and uh, be careful clearing stumps out there. They are dangerous. <laughs>